It's time to wake up, people. The dream of perfect autofocus is just big business's way of sedating you into a comfortable existence, all right? AI technology is making you the robot. Machine learning AF is making you a cog in the machine, all right? The right choice is rarely clear, just like your photos should be, and that's why I'm okay. gonna teach okay. you manual okay. focus okay, techniques. Chris, that's enough, that's enough. No, I'm still talking. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here, and we've got a quick little tutorial for you today, some tips and tricks on manually focusing, not only with photos, but also with video as well. Now today we're gonna to be focusing on manual focus techniques on mirrorless cameras primarily. Through an SLR viewfinder, you don't really get a lot of manual focus assists. However, I do want you to know that you do get some assists when you are using the live view feature on the back screen of your SLR. But mirrorless cameras where you actually get the most options and there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with manual focus lenses on a mirrorless body. Now one of the most basic manual focus assists, but also one of the most useful is just a punch in magnifier where the camera zooms in tight on an area so that you can get critical focus, almost like using a microscope or something like that. This is absolutely useful all the time for things like macro photography where you're up close, where the camera's autofocus might make a mistake. We also use this all the time on our show when we do our lens test, because rather than trust the autofocus of the camera in question, we like to manually focus punched in to make sure our focus is exactly where we want it. Now keep in mind there are some downsides. Because we're zooming in so tightly, you're not going to see your entire frame. So make sure you have your composition set before you do your critical focusing. The other issue, of course, is it doesn't do you much good if subjects are moving or if you're moving because uh, you're not going to see the entire composition. But there's another tool that's very useful for that. So the next technique we're gonna talk about is focus peaking. This is where the camera highlights the areas that are most in focus in some sort of bright color. And you get a variety so that you don't have a problem with one color blending into the background. Now you can also think of focus peaking as a kind of depth of field assist tool because whatever given aperture you're using, the depth of field that that lens creates will basically be glowing that color of peaking. Now, here are some of the issues. First off, if you have a closed down aperture with a lot of depth of field, you're gonna get a large zone of color. and then judging where you're actually in focus can be quite difficult. So it's not great for critical focus. It is great for something like action photography on the street where I just get a person glowing and I'm pretty much confident that they're largely gonna be in focus. If you do open up your aperture wider though so that you're getting very thin, shallow depth of field, well then the peaking will also be shallow and you'll actually get a pretty good idea of your critical focus. But there's another way that you can do it. It's an old school term called hyperfocal focusing. It was kind of an old school term because you only find it on old their lenses in a lot of cases. Basically the idea is this, I could put an aperture on my lens and then it would give me markings on the distance scale to show from what area to what area I should expect reasonable sharpness. Now a lot of modern bodies, for example, like Fuji's and Panasonic will actually show you a distance scale on the EVF or back panel. And then when you choose a lens and aperture combination, it'll actually show you the zone of focus on that distance scale, just like we would have gotten on the old school lenses. And then you have things like Nikon and Zeiss lenses, which actually have a digital LCD panel right on the lens itself. And it can give you all of this same information. Now, just like peaking, this is not about getting critical focus. This is about being able to set up a zone of focus ahead of time, know what distance to what distance things to be reasonably sharp and then you don't touch your manual focus you just walk down the street take shots and know that if your subjects are within that range they should largely be sharp now autofocus has come a long way and we do largely rely on it for stills, but a lot of these techniques can still be useful and they're also very useful for video applications. Beyond that, there's a lot of cool manual focus techniques that are essential for the video's creative process. So we're gonna go to Jordan to talk about that next. Now when people first start shooting video, one of the most common issues they have is tracking their subject as it moves towards or away from the camera. And it takes so much practice to do that perfectly. So a great workaround is to actually set marks for yourself. Now I don't mean you have to grab a tape measure and lay down focus marks like you've got a bunch of actors coming towards you, but I like to pick a few things in the environment, say a tree or a crack in the sidewalk, I know my subject is gonna be moving over. And as long as I'm focused on those at the same time my subject's moving past them, even if it's out of focus, focus during a lot of the shot. As long as you hit those marks, it's gonna look like they were in focus the entire time. Our minds are pretty crazy that way. Another thing to remember is you can change the focus distance not just by twisting the focus ring on your lens, but also by physically moving the camera. I do this a ton when I need to make very small adjustments. 
Say Chris is talking to camera and he leans forward very slightly, I'll just physically move the camera backwards about the same amount of distance. This means I don't have to grab the focus ring and potentially overshoot. Also a lot of the time when I'm moving the camera with my subject, whether it's handheld or on a gimbal or a steady cam, I don't really want to grab the focus ring. It could jostle the camera and I might not want to set up an expensive follow focus unit. So in those situations, I just want to keep the exact same amount of distance from the camera to my subject. As long as I maintain that, they should be in focus the entire shot. My last tip for today, a lot of the time when you're doing product photography or B-roll, you're gonna wanna snap focus from completely out of focus right onto your subject, and it can be really difficult to hit that mark. Here's what I like to do. I actually pre-focus on the subject, then I throw the focus completely out, either in front or behind the subject. Afterwards in editing, I reverse the clip and it'll look like it's snapping into perfect focus every single time. So it seems kind of funny with all the new technology in these cameras that we wind up talking about manual focus, but with so many people adapting lenses and getting into video, it seems like the right time. And we have a lot more tips too, so let us know if you'd like to see more episodes like this. As well, don't forget, follow Chris and I on Instagram, on Twitter, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more tutorial episodes.